We're just now getting ready to hit the Delaware Bay. Did you know you could anchor over there? I see boats on the other side of that wall. Further back there, it's a little boat coming. But look at the water out there. That is a beautiful thing. Flat. Now all we gotta do is watch for the big container ships to make sure we don't get waked. It's one thing getting waked, right? We know how to handle that now, right, Sammy? That's right. <laughs> it's another thing fighting the waves and getting waked. That's just too much. taking us through the Delaware Bay and since the water is so calm I decided to come down to the galley to make a chicken a baked chicken dish it's a low carb called cheesy chicken you can um, I'll show you in a minute how to do it but um, it's really easy and Sam likes it so you can make a keto with um, olive oil or you can make a carnivore using some leftover bacon grease or something like that. But anyway, it's a, one of our favorite dishes here aboard the Here's To Us. I was going to make it last night, but when we got into Chesapeake City, I was so tired. I couldn't even think of baking anything. So what I'm going to do today is while we're underway, I'm going to put it together and then have it in the refrigerator when we get to Etches um, in Cape May, then I'll just eat it up. So very easy to do. There's a lot of things you can do underway when the water is cooperating and it's nice and calm. So that's what I'm going to be doing right now. I'm going to sharpen my knives. You know, my friend Jeff, I'm Jeff and Deb, gave me such a hard time because my knife was dull when I was making, um, what did I make on that first loop? It was, um, oh, my pulled pork. And he said it drove him crazy watching me try to cut the pork, you know, the fat off the pork. He just, uh, like I couldn't stand to watch it your knife was dull well I just sharpened it up ready to go so for this recipe I decided to make a carnivore version because you know I'm into that these days so I put some leftover bacon grease down in the pan what I want to do is take a chicken breast here and butterfly it so I'm cutting it there you go right in half like that I don't want any of the pieces. Well, I want them about the same thickness. So I'm going to put salt and pepper first. <laughs> I was like, cut once. No, what is it? Measure twice, cut once. Not really for me in cooking, but uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. I. Wait, okay, Sam just warned me that there is a wake coming and I see it in the window there. So I'm just going to take a little break, steady myself, and let it pass. Here it comes. Woo! Did you feel it? <laughs> Did you see it? Okay, it's gone now. So I'm cutting two chicken breasts. Now this recipe works great also with chicken tenders, you know, because those little chicken tenders are already cut up into little pieces and you don't have to do this. So I'm going to salt and pepper, after I wipe my hands off a little bit, salt and pepper. Actually, I'm just going to salt them because, you know, me and pepper, we don't, aren't getting along these days. You know, I hear white pepper is better. I'm going to put those pieces down like that and then salt the top now they say 
well. Going on the loop, a lot of people gain weight while they're doing that, you know, because it, it's you're on vacation for a whole year. We decided to do low carb. Actually, I decided we would do low carb. <laughs> so, what that means is that we do low carb during the trip when I'm cooking, and then when we go out to a restaurant, I don't ever tell Sam you have to eat low carb or whatever. He does what he wants. But um, when you are just working on the boat, you get a lot of exercise. So. It may or may not even out, depending on how much you uh, like to eat and drink. As I mentioned, this is a low carb. Um, it has chicken, it has cheeses, and it has bacon. Now, on a boat, I do it very differently than if I were going to do this at home. What I do is I'm using sliced cheese instead of grated cheese. Um, you know, having a block of that and grating my own, that's my preference. And then I'm also using these real bacon pieces instead of real bacon. So just a little tweaking. I'm gonna take the cream cheese. Now the recipe that I use, it says to use about six ounces of cream cheese. If you love cream cheese, I guess that's the way to go. I, uh, I don't know that just is a lot. Um, and I, I, just, I don't know, I put a couple of chunks on there on each chicken um, piece that's here. So it's coming out to about, I don't know, maybe four and a half, five ounces of cream cheese. Now at this point, I would, you know, take the grater out and grate and actually you know, I usually do that on the boat too because that's no big deal. But this time I'm just going to put cheese slices right over the top. I mean, how easy could that be? If you are not low carb, this is probably not a good recipe for you. It's for the people that are following a keto or, like I said, a carnivore way of eating. I didn't know a lot of people on the loop that are keto. So anyway, and then we're going to top it off with some bacon. And um, this is Sam's favorite dish that I make. More bacon, more better. Okay, so we're all done. I'm just going to put um, a cover on this, stick it in the refrigerator, and then I'll cook it up once we get to a Gis Marina in Cape May. And that's the finished product. You saw it didn't take me any time to put it together. So, very excited about cooking it up later. Well, I guess I've been in the cooking mood today. Uh, for the past, uh, I don't know, hour or so, I cooked this pork loin. Now it came from uh, the grocery store and all the seasonings and everything were on it. I believe it was apple, applewood bacon pork loin, something like that. But I cooked it in my instant pot, sauteed it first, and then pressure cooked it for an hour. And it smells delicious. It looks delicious. I guess tonight we'll see if it is delicious. Well, I'm at it again. I pulled out my air fryer, put away the Instant Pot, and I am gonna make steak bites. You see in there? What I do is I get London broil or top sirloin from Sam's and cut it into small bite-sized pieces and then put it in my air fryer. You see that? So, this is one of my favorite things to have either with eggs in the morning or, you know, anytime. It's uh, steak and delicious. I usually don't salt or pepper or put any spices on it. What I do after I cook it 
is I put some salt and I put some butter in there to make it a little juicy. And then that helps when I'm ready to reheat them, I stick those in the air fryer and crisp fry them. Anyway, this is my next cooking project, making steak bites. Now, did you notice I've got a small air fryer? This is a compact uh, appliance that I bought when Charles in Ohio took us grocery shopping. Hi Charles. Anyway, I found this. Charles and Sam were over in another area of the store. So Sam was distracted. And I've just put this in my basket. So, um, you know, it was not an argument at all uh, when we got to the checkout. I mean, what is he gonna say? Charles is standing right there. So anyway, um, this is how I got a compact air fryer, which I use all the time. In fact, I started using it more than my Instant Pot. But I still, of course, you saw me, I used it today. Um, I have the things on board that I need, that I like to cook, and I just make a space for them. All right, so I'll keep you posted. I just pulled the last batch out of the air fryer and doesn't that look great so this is one of the easiest uh, onboard recipes I do just because you heard what I do I take a cheaper cut of meat like London broil or top sirloin cut it up it's also good if you like garlic to put some garlic powder with your salts and uh, I undercooked it because I'm not, obviously not eating all this right now so when it's time for me to have some I'll just get some out of the refrigerator stick it in the air fryer and uh, cook it a little bit just enough to make it a little warm so just another cooking tip while you're on board so Rev has used the instant pot and is it instant pot? Instant, yes. Instant pot. In an instant. And the air fryer, and those are both very high power uh, AC pieces of equipment. But they plug into the wall. Okay, so anything that plugs into the wall and adheres to us. While we're underway, I have the both engines are running. The alternators are running off of those and the alternators are charging the batteries and now the batteries are DC but we're also equipped with an inverter and that inverter takes that DC from the batteries and makes it into AC and so I can sit up here and while she puts a piece of equipment on I can watch the needles move a little bit but I'm also watching that hey those batteries are getting charged from the alternators and she's able to do that stuff. So uh, we cover a lot of this in uh, our intro courses on Great Goop Academy, specifically under the boat and also living aboard. So if you haven't seen those, go there to Great Goop Academy. And a bonus cooking tip. I had some frozen chicken wings, so um, after the steak bites, I decided that I wasn't through air frying, so I made some, am making some chicken wings. Now, I put them there. So, cooking, I don't put anything on them. Usually what I do is after I am done and I'm ready to have them, I'll put something like a little butter and this seasoned salt. Um, I've done it with barbecue sauce and tossed them. So whatever seasonings, uh, garlic parm, that's good too. But I like to fry them, air fry them up and then put the seasoning on later. So these are frozen. So it's taken a little longer in the air fryer to cook up. But if they aren't frozen, um, obviously it doesn't take as long but just another way I am entertaining myself as we are moving on the Delaware Bay headed to Etches.